Welcome to the first video of gene manipulation. In the beginning, we'll start explaining why do we need mutants. So in basic science, we need mutants to determine gene function, gene location, to study diseases. While in biotechnology, we need mutants to improve the yield or other aspects in the production of chemicals or energy, to improve agricultural efficiency by creating plants resistant to insects, temperature, draft, for the bioremediation of contaminated environments, also for applications in medicine, such as gene therapy, production of drugs, and for having food with higher nutritional value, medicinal properties, or enhanced organoleptic traits. So now let's talk about natural vi variability. Mutations occur naturally in nature and cause variability and evolution. Mutations can occur by errors during DNA replication or, or by environmental factors such as radiation, chemicals, viruses. We have somatic and germline mutations. Germline mutations occur in gametes and will be transmitted to the descendant, while somatic mutations occur in the rest of the cells and will not be inherited. Genomes are not, sta are not static, they are evolving all the time. For example, by horizontal transfer, in which genes from one organism and are transferred to other organism. Also, transposable elements are genes that can jump inside the genome from one place to the other. Then there are other events like genome duplication or other events as well, such as genome duplication and divergence or domain shafting that can create new genes. So now let's take a look back in history to the genetic engineering advances. So in the 1800s, Natural selection and genetic laws were discovered. And in the 1900s, the DNA was identified as the hereditary material. In 1972, the recombinant DNA was for the first time produced. And in 1995, the first genome was sequenced. In the last years, new genetic editing tools have been developed, such as CRISPR-Cas. Although genetic engineering is a recent discipline, humans have been modifying genomes since ancient times. Since the beginning of civilization, humans have been selecting the plants with the best traits in order to the offspring to carry these traits. And after centuries of selective breeding, we have that in the beginning, wild tomatoes would look like this and now they have become these tomatoes that we know. So there are two main genetic approaches, the classical or forward genetics, in which we start with a mutant phenotype, for example, that is impaired in a process that we are interested. And with this mutant, we discover the gene that is responsible for this phenotype. In contrast, with reverse genetics, we start with a gene that, for example, has been shown that it's important for our process of interest by omic technologies, but we don't know what this gene does. Therefore, we manipulate this gene into the organism that we want, and then we saw the resulting phenotype. Therefore, knowing this, we will know the, the function of the gene. So now let's talk about genetic engineering. Genetic engineering is the direct manipulation of the genes of an organism, and it follows a process. First, we have to select the target gene and the strategy. That can be to increase or decrease the levels, or directly to eliminate the gene. And afterwards, we have to do an in silico design of the whole cloning process. After that, we will do the isolation of the gene, and we will introduce our gene of interest into a vector in what is called gene cloning. After that, we will introduce this recombinant vector into the organism of interest by transformation. And finally, we will analyze the result of the genetic manipulation. So the first thing that we have to do is to isolate the gene. For this, we have to isolate the mRNA out of the cells. 
After that, we have to reverse transcribe the mRNA into copy DNA. And from this, we will have to isolate our gene of interest out of the whole cDNA pool by PCR reaction. The next step is gene cloning. That means to introduce our gene of interest into a plasmid and making many copies of it. Plasmids are circular DNA molecules naturally present in bacteria. They can replicate independently of chromosomal DNA. Artificial plasmids have been used for genetic engineering reasons as recombinant vectors. And what does vectors mean? Vector will be used as a vehicle to transport our gene of interest into the organism that we want to modify. So these recombinant vectors we will have some elements like origin of replication, selectable marker. The selectable marker will be used for screening the cell that contain the, contain the vector from the ones that do not. The reporter gene, that again, it will be for screening the cells with our gene of interest from the ones who don't have it. The multiple cloning site, that is a region with many restriction sites in which you can insert there your gene of interest. And finally, elements for the expression of your gene. So there are many gene cloning methods. The traditional one is the restriction ligation method. In this method, restriction enzymes of type 2 will recognize a sequence, in this case, the purple sequence, and cut in a definite position within that sequence or close to it. Then both vector and the gene will, will be cut with the same restriction enzyme and their complementary ends will anneal and the caps finally will be sealed by an enzyme con called DNA ligase. Another gene cloning strategy is called hot fusion method. In this method, both the linearized vector and the insert, this our gene, will have complementary ends. And this is possible because previously we have introduced these ends into our gene by PCR. The, then we will introduce both the linearized vector and the in and our gene into a tube in which it's already the hot fusion buffer that will contain an exonuclease and a DNA polymerase and their substrates. Then the exonuclease will trim the five prime ends of both the vector and the gene, and then the DNA polymerase can continue elongated from them and extend the ends. Finally, the hot fusion mixture will be transformed into bacteria and then the DNA mix will be sealed. Another method of cloning is gateway cloning. This method uses the mechanism of recombination used by the lambda fake to integrate its genome into the DNA of bacteria. For this purpose, our gene of interest will be flanked by ATTB sites, while the vector will be flanked by the ATTP sites. Then site-specific recombination will take place and the gene will be integrated into the vector and we will obtain what is called as the entry clone flanked by the ATTL sites. And then we want our insert to be in the final vector that will have ATTR sites. And again, a uh, site-specific recombination will take place and we obtain what is called as the expression clone. Other gene cloning method, it's called the TOPO-TA cloning. This method, the enzyme DNA topoisomerase 1 is used. DNA topoisomerase is an enzyme that has a role during replication regulating DNA supercoiling. This enzyme recognizes a specific sequence in DNA and binds to it covalently. Then it makes a single strand cut allowing the DNA to unwind. And finally, the enzyme will rejoin again the clip strands. So what I am telling this, because this enzyme can serve both as a 
restriction enzyme and as a ligase. So we have the role of two enzymes in one. So for this, the topo vectors are commercialized in a linear form with T overhangs and a topoisomerized enzyme attached to the three prime end. Then this enzyme will ligate at the DNA, the insert DNA or gene of interest with the suitable ends with the A overhangs into the vector. So the next step is transformation. That means to introduce the recombinant vector into a host, normally bacteria, because it reproduces very fast for making many copies of the vector. After isolating the recombinant vector, this will be introduced in the final organism of our, in of our interest. Since dif different organisms may need a different transformation technique depending on the structure of the membrane and the cell wall. There are many transformation techniques, for example, electroporation. In this method, electric fields are used, are applied into the cells to create transient pores in the membranes so the vector can go into the cell. Another method is gene gun, in which we will shoot bullets coated with our vector into the organism of interest. In microinjection, we will inject the, the foreign DNA directly into the nucleus of the cell. Other techniques are, for example, heat shock with competent cells. The competent cells have been created by treating the cells with calcium chloride. The, the positive charges of the calcium will mask the negative charges of the DNA and of the membrane. This will avoid the repulsion created by these charges and then the DNA will can cross the membrane more easily. But for that we have to apply a heat shock. So pores in the membrane can be created where DNA can pass. Another technique is agrobacterium mediated transformation. Agrobacterium is a natural bacterium that infects cells, and in this process, it transfers part of its DNA into the DNA of the plants. So scientists have been manipulated this natural method to introduce their genes of interest. And finally, another method is the transduction with replication defective viral particles. This technique has been inspired in the natural mechanism of the viruses to integrate its, gene, its genome, genetic material into the genetic material of the infected cell. But in this case, we will uh, put the, our gene of interest in the genetic material of the final organism, but we will do that in a safe way, not with real viruses, but with replication defective viral particles. And after transformation, it's very, very important to do the selection of the cells that contain the recombinant virus from those who do, don't have it. So for example, now we have to remind the role of the selection marker that was present in the plasmids. For example, if we have as a selection marker an antibiotic resistant gene, only the cells carrying the vector will survive after a treatment with the antibiotic. And now, thank you for watching.